But we begin with that dramatic development from the war in Gaza, Israel's rescue of four hostages during a bloody recovery operation in the central Gaza Strip. The mission to free the three men and one woman aged 21 to 40 comes as the conflict enters a ninth month. Word of the rescue prompted scenes of joy outside the hospital in northern Israel where the quartet were taken for assessment. It's only the third time Israeli forces have freed hostages alive. But the raid has come at staggering cost. Hospital officials claim more than 200 Palestinians were killed and at least 400 wounded as the operation played out. The CBC can't verify those figures. An Israeli counter-terror officer also died. Israel says the rescue was planned for weeks. This was a high-risk complex mission based on precise intelligence conducted in daylight in two separate buildings deep inside Gaza. Iris Mackler has more on the story from Jerusalem. Iris, can you tell us more about the hostages freed today? Yes, I can. They were four uh, people who were at the Nova Music Festival, two as workers uh, and two as concert goers. And uh, since they were freed in two separate operations, two helicopters coming back to Israel from uh, the Gaza Strip. They were taken directly to a hospital, and there we saw them meeting their families. Nella Argamani, for example, the one female who was rescued, meeting her father. It's his birthday. He told Israel's prime minister, who also came to the hospital to see the hostages, um, the returned hostages, he told him it was the best present he could have had. And uh, her mother is well known. You know, she's well known altogether. I think part of the reason that there is great excitement inside Israel is this, twofold. One is, I, th I think I'll put it bluntly, Israelis do not feel that this war has been going well for them. And this is a moment of relief. Uh, and second of all, Noah Argamani herself is well known. Uh, she was filmed or photographed both actually uh, as she was being taken into Gaza. Then she was in a hostage video while she was in Gaza. The two young men who were with her were killed within 24 hours, or at least that's when we saw them dead. I remember reporting this for the CBC that day. So she has been through a lot and she has become in many ways the symbol of the remaining hostages. And now she's home. So I think enormous joy inside Israel uh, and vital a, a, a great feeling here um, of relief and happiness, overwhelming happiness, um, the defence minister said, and Israel's prime minister saying that all the hostages would be returned home one way or another. Israel was working on it. And, Iris, you know, these hostage rescue missions can be risky and sometimes mm. deadly. What can you tell us about how the actual operation itself played out? The IDF spokesperson spoke earlier today uh, Daniel Hagari, and what he said was this. Uh, they went in, it was a rescue under fire, they went into a heavily populated area. Israel had not, um, Israeli troops hadn't been in to the Nusserat refugee camp. They knew where they were going, it was based on intel. However, um, it, was, it was bloody, as you say. The leader of the operation to rescue the three men, they were held in two locations, but to rescue the three men was killed in this operation, and we are hearing reports. They are fluctuating the numbers, but between something like dozens uh, killed uh, and many more wounded. So you'd have to say that it is costly for both sides and that perhaps now is the time to look again at the uh, hostage deal, the ceasefire, which would be a benefit to civilians um, and to hostages, Palestinian civilians and Israeli hostages as well. Iris Mackler in Jerusalem. Thank you.